سلام رمضان مبارك كريم مرحبا بكم في القناة ديالنا ساير ميتس كريغ اليوم غادي نديرو ان فيديو سبيسيال اديسيون رمضان Today you'll spend a day in Ramadan with us. We're going to introduce you to the food with us. We'll show you how much we're going to do for Ramadan. And we're going to ask you a few questions that people ask on Instagram about their relationship with Ramadan. Hello, Ramadan. Hello, Ramadan. Good morning. So we just woke up about two hours ago and we decided to have a slow morning because after one week of fasting and working, we were wore out. So we deserved a little bit of rest. So now we're headed to Whole Foods, do some shopping uh, and then we'll uh, prepare our iftar. Yeah, so let's go to Whole Foods. <laughs> we're walking now. So we walk into uh, Whole Foods. Luckily, it's only a five minute walk from our place. And um, yep, yeah, supposed to be spraying sunny, nice weather, but no, it's raining and I had to pick up my umbrella. Okay, so Ramadan uh, brain is talking here and we've been like standing here for like five minutes trying to figure out which cake, which cake, which should, we cake should we fix. I was gonna show you here. All kind of stuff. So this is uh, what we came for here. Is just the orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice. Where I think it's really cheap. Ten dollars. This is more than ten dollars. I think this is like sixteen. Yeah. So it's like. Used to be in the for orange juice. This is Craig's favorite place in Whole Food. Look at him. We're gonna pick some. And guess what? These are Moroccan olives. Uh, it says somewhere that it's Moroccan olives. Oh, here. It's uh, dry curd black bendy olives. Mm. If my mom know how much we pay for these, she's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. It says uh, made in Morocco. And it said made in Morocco. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. So, of course, I got some uh, garbazo beans or chickpeas hummus uh, to make my herida. Tomato paste for my herida. Oh, really? Uh, the big one for uh, Oh, should we get some dates? Is this too much? Oh, it's not too much. It's never much. We still have like 20 days left of Ramadan. Yeah. And we are almost out. Is this cheaper than the one we got? Or? Uh, this, uh, these are pitted, so these have a pit inside. For me, like, I like the pit part. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yay. We found some Mishdul dates and they were, I think they're on sale. They're on sale. We got them for like one dollar off. Wow. <laughs> it's a steal. It's a steal, baby. We got a deal. Okay, look at the line. It's crazy. <laughs> Okay. All right, 
right, so the first thing I'm going to make for iftar is um, shrimp brewet. I have some shrimp here that I decided to throw. And I mind my things here. And guess who's going to help me with brewet, babe? You. You're the one who's going to make it. Okay. So one thing you learn in Ramadan is to be multitask. You want to cook different things at the same time. So while I'm cooking my bayouette, I'm going to make herrera. Like you can't have iftar in Morocco without herrera. So I'm going to use a little bit of cayenne for like a touch of spiciness. Usually, uh, we should use the hirisa, but I don't have any hirisa. Turmeric. Just a little bit. Okay, add all the celery. Woo! Voila! Time for the tagine. We're cheating. It's not a tagine. <laughs> it's uh, our. Uh, this guy is cool. The ninja thing. Like we do everything in it, including cooking Moroccan tagine. Um, another little piece here. Okay, so I'm an amateur at this. Uh, no, don't judge, please. Uh, a little more. No, baby. I Three hours later. All right, this is ready to serve. And it smells so good. So finally it's time to eat, it's iftar time, we've been cooking for the last two hours and finally it's time to eat all this delicious thing. We made some hrera, cinnamon, bagarir, uh, brewet, the Greg rolled, and... Uh, tajin barafok, which is my favorite. Yes, so uh, we're gonna eat this while watching some Moroccan drama, which is a must in Ramadan. Everyone is watching Moroccan TV shows. We're gonna watch Ben Shiha. Uh, <laughs> yes. <Ferris. laughs> And that's the name of the show is also Miktu, but oh. everyone knows it as Ben Shiha oh, because yeah. it's uh, <laughs> what everyone says. Yeah, so and also I want to clarify something that we don't usually wear jalapas, we're just dressing up for the occasion because it's a video where we're taking you with us on our typical day of Ramadan. So we thought we should look nice and like so just wish us some luck <laughs> that we don't dump food on ourselves. Oh, yeah, I'm very clumsy and probably gonna ruin it, but it's okay. <laughs> So yeah, see you in a bit for a little talk, and that's it. Bissahaf turkum. Bissahaf turkum. So it's time to answer the questions. So I'm going to ask you a question on Instagram. I'm going to ask you a question on Instagram. Does Craig fast with you for Ramadan? Was Craig to some from then? Yeah, so we fast together. Uh, the first time I fasted was four years ago. Uh, the first two years we were uh, not together. We were separated. Uh, Sarah was still in Morocco. Uh, but luckily the last two years we were able to fast together. Yeah, and that's so much easier when uh, we're together and I'm making those Moroccan dishes, right? <laughs> so much, yeah, so much. They have some Moroccan vibes. Yeah. Which leads into the next question, which is, uh, is it difficult to fast in the U.S.? So I'll let you answer that one. All right, so uh, it's my first year fasting uh, outside of Morocco. And uh, yes, it is difficult because at least in Morocco, when you fast, 
أم أنا سعيد إن دريجة يعني فش كت صفر رمضان في المغرب كل شيء كت بدل كت حس رمضان كين في الجو like it's in the atmosphere it's everywhere around you everyone is fasting times change everything goes more slowly and all that well there even like when I was working in Rabat like the hour changed like I was working for less hours but here nothing changes it's all on you it's like uh, it's definitely tougher for people who are living abroad to fast than people in Morocco yeah so for me uh, I don't I know no better I've actually uh, my first Ramadan uh, I wasn't I didn't fast but my first Ramadan uh, I was living in Morocco. Yeah, and, it's like when and, you when you yeah. first travel when you first travel to Morocco, like the first time he landed in Fez, actually it was Ramadan. Yeah. <laughs> and everything was closed. A couple, couple, it was like maybe the, the day or two after I landed, but everything was all closed up. I was like, wow, this is like a ghost town. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so back to that uh, topic. So uh, my experiences with fasting are were generally here in the U.S. and uh, I'm always the only person in my office that's fasting. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, you know, my colleagues are very considerate. They don't, they don't eat around me if they can help it. So uh, it's, it's not so bad, but I, I'm sure it must be much easier in Morocco. Yeah, absolutely. So the other question is, وش كت هدرب العربية؟ أتكلم العربية كليلاً. درست العربية في فاس في American Language Center in 2017. So. Uh, back then, I could have a conversation in Arabic, and now it's uh, Shuya and my uh, yeah. Arabia, uh, my Darija is uh, Shuya Shuya. Yeah, like I think it would, Craig like knows how to read Arabic and understand Arabic if it's like uh, Arabia Fusha. But when it comes to Darija, it's a little bit different because Darija we talk fast and the words like changed. Yeah. So, uh, but we he's trying. And to learn Darija, and like uh, we watch some Moroccan TV shows, and he hear me talking with my family, and he pick up words here and there. Uh, so I think it's it's just a learning process. Um, so people also are curious about how we're going to raise our kids. Are they going to be like religious and all that? So you want to answer this one? Uh, yeah, of course we will raise them uh, Muslims. Uh, we're both Muslims, so uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 definitely not even a question. Yeah. Um, and you know, obviously, if you're living here in the U.S., it's a little different. Uh, they're not immersed in the culture, so it takes a little more effort uh, to, to teach them. Yeah, but, exactly. But they definitely will, will teach them. All right. Uh, well, first they're going to be like good humans, and then they're going to be good Muslims. So. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump into the other question is what is Ramadan for you? So of course Ramadan is the is the holiest month in Islam. Uh, it's the uh, the month where uh, the first verses of Quran were revealed to uh, Prophet Muhammad. Uh, for me personally, it's uh, it's a month of uh, getting closer uh, not only to you but also uh, to God. And uh, you know we try to uh, rid ourselves of the bad habits uh, that we. That maybe we have on a on a daily basis. Uh, not just uh, we don't just uh, fast for food, but we fast for um, all the other. Uh, yeah, just cutting off all the bad habits. All the bad and things, and maybe more like self discipline. Yeah, even your thoughts. You know, try to keep your thoughts yeah. pure. Try to be kind. You know. Yeah, it's more like generous and more giving and charity. Yeah. So it's not just about food, but it's like beyond that. Yeah. So yeah. This is what Ramadan is for us. And another question is like, why you decided to learn Arabic in the first place? So it's a really interesting story. So <laughs> originally uh, I was a computer engineering major and I, uh, I did poorly in a math class and needed to change my major. So I changed yeah. it to inter international studies. <laughs> Something and, we have in common, so I think our kids are not going to be very smart. When no, you actually, math and math. Yeah, I was really good at math. Just one math class got me. I, I was bad in math, and guess what? My father was like a math teacher. Yeah, so, so that's a, a <laughs> schematic. Uh, but, uh, so I changed my major to international studies, and I chose uh, the Middle East and North Africa as the region to study. And so you had to learn Arabic, but you also learned about Islam, you learned about uh, politics. Um, economics, things, uh, migration uh, in the region. And uh, yeah, so my intention though was to use those things and do something with 
like military intelligence. Uh, like CIA or something. Like straight yeah. like the Homeland TV show. Yeah. This is what you want so, it to be. Because <laughs> I was originally, uh, I was a, I'm a, a veteran of the U.S. military. I was, uh, uh, I was in the Air Force. So I was a, I was a crew chief on fighter jets uh, straight out of high school when I was uh, 18 years old. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I wanted to defend America, you know, fight the guys who ran the planes into Kill the buildings. Kill the bad Muslims. Yeah. But ultimately, <laughs> after taking all the, the classes and learning about the region and then, uh, you know, living in, in Morocco for a while to study Arabic, uh, I, you know, obviously my feelings changed and, uh, and I kind of fell in love with the culture and the people, so. Yeah, the people. The and people. The people. people. <laughs> I think we covered most of the questions that we usually get on uh, Instagram. So. If you have a question you like or something you want to know more about us, like don't hesitate, go follow us on Instagram and ask us a question. We'll be very happy to answer it. And I hope you enjoyed our little chit chat about uh, Ramadan and like how we spend our day uh, fasting together. I hope you enjoyed to uh, know us, get to know us a little more. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Ramadan. Yep. Bye. Bye. <laughs>